Hi everyone, it's Lee with the Arts Council OKC Creative Aging Program. And today we're going to do watercolor hippos. And so what you'll need are pencil, watercolor paper, watercolors, paint brushes of various sizes, and paper towels for blotting, of course, and water. So, you know, hippos are kind of a fun shape <laughs> to do and they're kind of an interesting animal. And also what I wanna focus on today is when we're using watercolors and painting, you know, something that seems to be one particular color, it's actually multiple colors. So in this hippo, for instance, he is, you know, or she is purples and blues to kind of give that kind of purpley effect. And then the other one over here is it's, you know, I'm going to add more to it, but it is, you know, gray and peach and pink to kind of create a, um, color of its skin. So it's multiple colors and, you know, using tr watercolor in kind of transparent layers is, you know, it takes time, but it's just how, you know, you build up color. So you don't just have one flat color in the watercolor. So it makes it, you know, more interesting visually. And this, you know, takes time. And so you might have to let your watercolor paper relax a little bit so it doesn't stay wet so long. So anyway, let's get started. Okay, as you can see, I have rearranged my stuff and I like, I did just a simple outline of this hippo. Um, since the other two were in water, kind of immer submerged a little bit, I wanted just to do kind of a, just a mostly frontal view of the hippo. So I just really kind of lightly drew it in. And you know, hippos have the real interesting kind of hourglass kind of face. If you just kind of break it down, you know, normally into shapes and they have a little, little nice round ears. And if you do a big fat oval for their face and they have lots of nice wrinkles in their um, neck and everything. And this one, I'm just keeping it a little, you know, a little simpler. And also before you start, kind of figure out what colors you are wanting to try. You know, hippos are kind of in pinks and grays and purples and, you know, whatever colors you choose, totally fine. Just pick at least two colors to try together. So, okay, now let's get started. And you can use, um, you can start either with the background if you want or on this one, I'm just gonna start with the hippo's face because this one, you know, could have sky behind it instead of being in water or you just figure out what you want and you know, how you want your hippo to look. This is just kind of an exercise in color blending and just using more than one color for an overall effect. So I'm going to uh, decide what kind of colors I want. And you can really kind of have fun with it. You don't have to do a realistic color uh, for your hippo. You can have fun with it. Um, just, I just want you to use more than one color. And so, uh, because sometimes, especially like with watercolor, if you just use one solid color, it makes the watercolor look really flat. So I'm just gonna get some of my paint wet here. And if you really want to keep your lines visible, your pencil line, you know, just, you can paint over them just really lightly, just, you know, keep it really pretty light and translucent. So let's see, I think I'm gonna kind of keep this one in pinky, pinks and purples, uh, I like pinks and purples. And so anyway, this, what I'm gonna do is just start doing a really light light layer of paint on the hippo. And I'm just gonna kind of, this is just to kind of get a layer of color and maybe using a smaller brush or, and just kind of experiment. You can, I'm just kind of plotting it out really lightly here. And you know, your watercolor is gonna dry lighter anyway. Now something you can do is like what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of going in and putting in a you know, a bit of base color on everything. Now you can also come in here and use some darker 
while you're putting in the pink, you know, the lighter pink. It's up to you. Um, I just kind of like to get in the major shapes, but make sure you keep using lots of water because if you go, oh my gosh, I really don't like how that looks, that's, that's totally fine. Just come in and blot it with your paper towel. And the great thing with watercolor is just add water and just move it. And this is kind of like a quick, you moving it around quickly here. But the fun thing is you just, it's okay that you're gonna do lots of underpainting. So on this one, we're just adding in color and you can add a little bit darker pink if you want. But it already, even though this is kind of a fantastical hippo now because it's hot pink and purples, it already adds a, you know, it's already more interesting because I don't have just one color in there. And I'm just gonna keep going around and, you know, you get thicker paint, just keep moving it. And, you know, so I know his eyes in there and he's, so. And what I like to do is I like to kind of base mine off of a photograph, uh, you know, and in in, you can go online and they have lots of great photos of hippos because that kind of gives you a basis in, you know, r reality. Now you can get as whimsical as you want, but I kind of wanted to base these off of, you know, actual photos um, just so you have basic structure of what a hippo really looks like. Now you can totally change it up and make it look however you want it to, but I like to kind of start with at least the drawing with, you know, more of a realistic bent. But I'm, I'm a pretty whimsical person, so I thought it might be easier for you all to follow. I like to break, you know, change it up. So since I do a lot of kind of whimsical stuff that this way you could see it a little more realistically in structure, but then you paint, you can go wild, okay? So I'm just getting in, you know, my base coats of color. And then I might, might wanna do some a little bit darker here where I know there's some nice fatty folds, so. And you can see I'm just using really light, you know, translucent layers of paint. This is kind of just getting my underpainting here, okay? And so we're just gonna kind of be doing this as long as we go. And anything that, you know, now that I've covered most everything up, anything that you want to leave like really bright white, let the paper show. Now I've covered up a lot of it, but that's our, you know, and that's okay. Like I said, some of this will, you know, it'll all dry lighter anyway, but if you want to kind of, while it's still wet, come back and get some white in there, just go in with your brush with just water and pull it off, okay? So, and then I'm just dipping it in clean water, tapping it on my paper towel, and then bringing it in here, and then brushing the paint off on the paper towel. So, as you can see, that kind of adds a nice little bit here. And, okay, that's kinda, so. All right, and the thing with, when you're working with purples too, as you, you know, I'm sure I've said before, is that you just want to start out really light because purple gets dark really fast. So just, and then we can let this sit here a minute and um, just give it a chance to breathe because you don't want to overwork your paper, you know? You want to let it have a minute, but it already looks a little interesting because you know the, we've got, couple of different pinks and a little bit of purple. And so it is not looking flat. And that's what we wanna do. We're trying to avoid the hippo looking flat. You know, we're trying to have, you know, a little more of a three-dimensional look. And you can have a three-dimensional whimsical hippo. It's totally fine. So, and you know, we can come, and if you need to, you can use a hair dryer if you it's getting too wet. But the main thing is you just kind of want to work this really slowly. And now I'm gonna use a little bit of peachy color. And you know, you can switch 
to a smaller brush um, and just kind of experiment with what kind of brushes you're gonna use. And here again, I'm still using a lot of water in here. Whoop, that doesn't look like it though, but just keep moving it. And even though it's gonna dry lighter, I'm just gonna add some, whoop. <laughs> and if you make your hippo look angry, just kind of come back in and take it out. But I'm just gonna smooth some of this kind of peachy color in there, just for fun. And sometimes it just adds a little bit of dimension. And even if it doesn't look like it's doing much, it's doing something. Every little bit counts. And, you know, you can use your paper towel to blot some of the really, you know, if it's really heavy color off first, just to make sure you're not adding a big layer of darkness. Now, this one is not so bad because it's actually kind of a lighter color anyway, but never hurts to kind of just do anyway so and then just keep and then you can fuzz out your edges by just adding some water so this process takes a little bit of time you know it's about slowly layering up your colors and you may not like some of what you put down and you're like, mm, I'm gonna blend some of that out with a little bit of pink. Okay, even here. So I'm gonna add some pink in here. And some pink up here and maybe add a little darker pink, but I'm gonna put it on my paper towel first because it's really dark. So I'm gonna come back in. And I know that I have water already on here, so I'm just gonna dab it a little bit. Ooh. So no big deal, just put it in the water and then come back and I dabbed it on the paper towel first so I wouldn't just be dumping water all over my paper, but then you can kind of smooth it out. Come down here too, because I think that's a little bit much. And I'm also using a smaller piece of paper today as far as the watercolor, because you know, sometimes when you're trying something new, you know, you don't wanna do a huge piece of, you know, full sheet of paper. Now, some of you will, and that's totally fine too, so. Okay. But just don't make it daunting for yourself, you know, saying, oh, I'm gonna use this full sheet of paper, and then, and, feel like it's drudgery because this is still this is supposed to be fun you know it's a, it's a class it's learning something and trying new things so I'm just gonna add a little bit of okay I'm just kind of showing you how by adding little bits of dark you know of another color it kind of just changes how it looks but I'm still moving it out a lot and look I'm putting my arm in the watercolor I recommend don't doing that don't doing that, you know, don't do that. So, anyway. Okay. All right. And you can see just by adding like little bits there, just kind of brings out the edge. Now, because I'm kind of what I'm doing is I'm letting the big areas dry. So what I'm gonna do is kind of come in here and add little places that I know are gonna be darker and just kinda adding it in but coming back and taking it off as well. So I'm just gonna kinda, looks really messy and like why would you do that, Lee? I'm gonna come back and take it, tone it down. So I'm just gonna kind of, on both sides, I'm just gonna soften it. And then the thing is you wanna soften it really quickly so that you don't have that hard line. Because part of it is about, this is, this is a little bit of trying to be a little subtle. Okay. 
And it looks kind of like we just took most of it back, but back off, but it's not, it's not gone. You know, he has these nice little folds of, so I'm gonna come back in here. And these nice wrinkles, and then I'm gonna come back and soften it. And I'm using a little circular motion, so it kind of gives it a little, because it, so that it's, when it softens it, it has a little bit of an edge, but not a really hard edge. Now, but you can see sometimes where you go back in, where stuff's still wet, it'll move your paint that you already have. So let's just give it a minute and let this dry a sec, and then we'll come back. All right. So now that I've kind of dried the paper a little bit, I add a little bit more, but then also just be aware when you're using your brushes, sometimes a small brush, you know, when you're um, kind of trying to blend stuff out, it doesn't work as well as if you were using a little bit bigger brush. brush. So just, you know, experiment with that. Um, and then what we're, then we just keep going. So, and the, I kind of, I took a hair dryer and dried it a little bit. And then if it starts curling up too much, flip it over on the back side and dry hit the back of the paper with the hair dryer, And that'll kind of help keep it a little bit uh, flatter. Now, sometimes depending on your paper, it will still curl up anyway. Um, and that's fine. So we're just going to keep going and layering in different colors. And I liked that I accidentally got into this other blue. And so it kind of created an interesting color, even though I drug my arm through it, but I did wash my arm off. And another great thing about watercolors, if you get it on your clothes, totally washes out, you know, that's a great thing about watercolor too. So I'm gonna put some of this stuff down here. And to, you know, if you want to create some um, other kind of oops, texture on your hippo, like I did on this one where I did little dots of color, you know, and less translucent, you know, the more I went along. And on this hippo, you know, this is a lot of layers because you want to have a nice amount of contrast. You know, so this one, you know, is not quite done, but this is kind of the, where I built up a lot and then started doing this. But this one looks really nice and rich because it has nice lights, and white and really light and actually nice heavy darks to create that great contrast. But this has, you know, lots of dark blues and purples and the turquoise and little green in there. And, and this one has a nice bit of different color too. So just kind of figure out, like I said, figure out where, it's helpful if you kind of know what colors you're kind of going for initially. Um, and you can use whatever as long as they kind of coordinate or they, or they don't have to. So I'm just gonna kind of keep coming back in here. And sometimes I like just doing a little bit of a dotting pattern if I'm using, you know, um, watercolor just to kind of give it a little bit of texture while I'm spreading it out. And you can also just kind of see what, what it looks like to you and you might not like it. And then you can wipe it off and then take your brush back on here and pull some of that off. because you want the watercolor is great and you want to keep stuff really pretty translucent, but you also, it's a nice, it's a balance between getting your paper too wet and wet enough. You know, now when you're doing a wet on wet project, that's different, but this is where kind of, you want it to flow and be kind of interesting, but not so much that we're tearing up the paper, not so wet. But see this uh, added a little bit of extra layer and interest and so it's just a matter of putting it on and then getting it to the right amount of what you like and then taking some off if you need to. And I'm adding a little kind of that purpley blue in here just to kind of, but as you can see, it's really pretty wet. So I'm gonna wipe it off on my paper towel and keep going. But it's always nice when you're doing, you know, three-dimensional things that you, 
either use a circular pattern or dotting, because if you're using a line, it's gonna flatten it out. So just, um, you know, it'll give it a real hard edge, and that's fine if that's what you're wanting, but if you kind of want something, a slow buildup of color, then, whoo, that's some heavy blue. So we're gonna do the same thing, because I've got quite a bit of water on here, so now I'm gonna go back and pull some of that off, and I'm just, but doing the dotting pattern. And then you can, and also while you're doing this, you can look at it and go, oh, some of my color combinations aren't looking as nice as I thought, and that's okay. And then you can just kind of pull as much up. I'm using the brush to pull the color off because if I were to use the paper towel, it would take a whole bunch off, which, you know, for doing a sky or in a background, that's fine, but this is a little more subtle way of taking some color off. Okay, so I'm gonna add some more of this purple. And here again, I'm just going to seemingly do a whole bunch of weirdness. That's okay, woo. Some seriously thick paint there. It's okay, I'm rinsing my brush off and and come back and kind of blend these together and then just kind of move it on out. But I'm still staying within those lines so it still is keeping that little bit darker edge there. And then I'm gonna change the color. I'm coming up here. Mm, and it looks kind of like mud so I'm gonna come in and take that off. Not exactly like mud, but just not as interesting as I'd like. And so then this is nice and thick, so I'm gonna come back in and just take a little bit of this off too. But I wanna keep that a little bit darker in here, so let's, I'm just gonna, and then kind of come back along that edge, and then by just doing that, that kind of hits that mouth edge and kind of blends that in again too. So. And I'll kind of jump around a little bit here and kind of add some more, you know, heavier paint, not heavier, but just darker, you know, more paint, less water, even though it's still really watery. And then I'm gonna come in and blend this in. And then obviously I need a little more water. Part of this is just you're getting more comfortable with blotting and moving the paint. Cause it's, it's kind of, I'm doing it kind of quickly, but you know, it's just, it's not hard. It's just kind of moving it around, moving the paint around and using water and figuring out how much you want and what kind of effect you're going for. But then, it's just really kind of fun to use different, just blend lots of different colors because it doesn't makes it a lot more interesting than if I were just to have done a solid purple or pink or gray. But then you can see if I'm kind of using the line around where the lines are, instead of dotting, it gives it a different effect, a different look. Mm -hmm. And I use, paper towels, I, you know, have one on my lap, one over to the side, so. I use them a lot and I still seem to drag my arm through the paint, great. You all do a better job of not dragging your arm through things, so. But as you can see, see it's just we're slowly building it up and then, you know, the closer we're getting to being done, the more paint and less water you'll use just to get your, you know, nice bright details. So, and this hippo is looking a little more stylized, which, you know, that's fine. I mean, hello, it's <laughs> hot pink and purple. So it's gonna seem a little more fantastical anyway because of the colors I chose. And that's totally cool. Anything goes, I mean, you can have a green hippo 
whatever strikes your fancy. And you can have a gray hippo if you want, but you're gonna wanna add more colors in there like grays and blues or grays and pinks, you know, just to kind of keep it from looking like flat gray because hippos are not flat gray. Okay, no, well, they're not flat pink either. Ha, huh. more purple. So I'm gonna add I'm just gonna kind of come in here and add some. A little bit darker. But then I also need to go back quickly and kind of tone some of it down. This got a little crazy at the bottom here, so I am gonna take my paper towel and blot it. And then I'm just using the brush that has water on it and just kind of spreading it out. So. And here again, just pay attention to your paper because if it's kind of really wet and then it's starting to look a little strange because you're working it over and over with it still being wetter, you know, too wet, then give your paper a minute to breathe. Okay. I'm just gonna kind of come in here and see where some of it is dried and I'm coming in here with it and doing it, doing dotting with it wet, kind of creates that interesting, nice texture. And then also make sure you step away from it, pick it up, look at it at a different perspective because you know, when you're sitting here doing this, it's sometimes hard to see what it's really looking like. Okay, so we've got a nice, underpainting going and so we're and then you let it kind of dry a little bit and then keep coming back and adding more but you can see that it's more interesting even with the wild colors it's more interesting than if it were just a flat color okay and see that's still pretty wet over there so i need to And then even when you're pulling paint off, do it directionally so that you're doing it in service of your picture, okay? See like how I'm kind of pulling this, but I'm giving it, still following in it, the directional lines, okay? Because that's just gonna help you. I need to add some more darker purple in there. I'm not sure what I was doing over here, but that's okay. I'm gonna give this a minute to read. Since this is, you know, lighter weight watercolor paper, it is more affected by the water than if it were really thick. But there, you can still get some really great effects with it. So we're gonna give this a minute. Be right back. Okay. So you can see that, you know, I've continued to add more and I will, but you can see that it's just a slow process you kind of let your paper rest and then keep going. And, you know, this is just a new kind of way of, you know, experimenting with, you know, making an animal a certain color, but by not just using one color, using multiple colors to create an overall singular color effect. So, and, you know, you can build your, you know, work your way up to it. So this is supposed to be fun, remember? As long as you're having fun and learning something, that's the whole point. So take good care of yourselves and we will see you next time.